Next on MLR Weekly, the collapse of the New York franchise. Also, free agents signed by New York, Nate Augsburger and Chris Matina. Plus, Rugby Morning's John Fitzpatrick with more on New York and other Major League Rugby news. Rugby Wrap-Up's MLR Weekly brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig & Whistle, New York City. The world's best rugby pub. And Lean and Limber. Stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Presented by Rugby Wrap-Up, Matt McCarthy in New York City. And ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, this is a tough show for me to do. Uh, With the news that the New York franchise is following the Toronto franchise in their shuttering of their operations, uh, it it hits home right between the eyes. Uh, But we soldier on and we have a good show for you, including transparent interviews with Nate Augsburger, who was with San Diego last year, but had signed with New York, and Chris Matina, who was with Chicago last year and signed with New York. Both signings were unannounced, uh, but both players are here to, to give their perspective on what's happened. But before we get to that, we have our recurring segment, Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with John Fitzpatrick. John, it's a bit of a different show this week. Yeah, man, I thought after last week, we had gotten past the troubles, if you will. But uh, according to our colleague, Brian Ray, who first had the news probably a couple of weeks ago, but made it official, New York Ironworkers will not be competing in the 2024 MLR season. Matt, this news feels a little bit different than the Toronto Arrows news. What, What's your take? Well, it's like, you know, when you hear about a bombing in somebody else's city and you kind of like, ah, you, you kind of, it doesn't affect you directly. Uh, but when it, when, when the bomb hits your city and this is a bomb, um, it, you, you, you understand suddenly, in, instantly what people in Toronto, people in Atlanta, people in LA, Austin, uh, Glendale, Colorado, what they felt. You know, in different degrees and varying degrees. For me, it it, it hits personally because, uh, you know, just as bluntly and plainly as I can say, it's a dried up revenue stream and a limited revenue stream uh, business, right? But at the same time, you know, I'm going to land on my feet. I know what I got myself into. I've chosen this path, but for players and wives and staff, uh, it's just devastating. I mean, it, there's just there are no other jobs in this realm in the United States for all those people. You know, players can and will end up in different cities depending on scenarios, on on life, on, but, you know, staff members, and I'm just thinking of the New York staff in particular. What now? You know, it's, it's, it's uh, tough. It's tough. And, I, and for you down in D.C., you don't have a New York rival right now. It's tough. It's tough. I'm still an optimist. I think that the team will be back in some form in 2025, 2026. Uh, it's an important market, particularly if there's going to be a World Cup here. And, and John, who knows? Does this impact World Rugby's decision to have the World Cup here? Matt, you, you bring up a lot of good questions, right? Like, where do we go from here? And I think the first part is just the human element, right? <clears throat> For the players, the coaches, the staff, and the players – uh, in New York just weeks before the holiday season now out of jobs at least uh, the staff and the support crew like where do they go uh, from here and that and that's tough for them you know hindsight's always 2020 though I and mean, if you look back it, did we see some warning signs of of what was going on in New York potentially with the kind of the rebranding multiple times and trying to find a venue to play in New York. I mean, look, the New York Giants (laughs) and the New York Jets play in Jersey for crying out loud, right? It's hard to run a startup league across the U.S. and particularly New York with all the different entertainment options. But then the other questions, right? Yes, you mentioned, we now have two teams where players are going to be dispersed. 
where most of to clubs where 95% of the rosters are properly already filled. But now we're going to have some high quality players needing to find some, some rugby jobs. You know, I, let's keep going with this, right? We haven't heard an inkling from LA. Of course, you got to wonder if you're a fan, if you're concerned, if there's going to be an LA team in, in 2024, we have no idea. And then if you look at these new conferences, all of a sudden you now only have three teams in the East, right? Miami, DC, and New England. So that's going to need to be restructured and the schedule needs to still come out. And, you know, but I, it's not all doom and gloom. I am optimistic about this, but I cut off the great Matt McCarthy. So please continue. I, I was just going to add, uh, there is stability in the Los Angeles uh, organization. They did make their capital calls. Uh, they have shown paperwork. This was not necessarily the case from what I understand with the New York uh, potential new ownership group. There wasn't um, there wasn't a capital call made uh, when it was due, and then there was a period of time to that the owners allowed uh, to try to get that capital call, you know, allow for them to get the capital call together, and then it, it didn't happen again. And um, they tried. The owners tried to keep this thing alive, and I and I. And I get it. There's going to be a lot of people out there that are uh, that are screaming bloody murder. But at the same time, I keep going back to this professional sports leagues in the United States, particularly have a history of subtraction, uh, addition, attrition, movement. It's it's again, NHL had six teams until 1967, six, the original six. You know, the premiership across the pond in rugby is down to 10 teams. It's uh, it's it's I, I feel like I'm out of, out of wake almost, you know, talking right now. It's um, it's tough. It's tough. And I and, and and my heart just goes out to the players. You know, it's like and I really felt this year the New York franchise was going to turn the corner. They were primed to turn the corner. And I was excited about this new ownership group coming in, uh, met with them. And uh, was impressed and it just didn't work out. It just didn't materialize. So, well, Matt, here's the other thing. I think this needs to be stated pretty clearly. And we joked around about it a little bit last week on social, but let, let's be clear there's no Mark Cuban or Ryan Reynolds that's going to come in and save Leap. There's no white knight in shining armor worth billions of dollars who's going to come in and prop up professional rugby in the U.S. You know why? And that's almost insulting to a lot of the people who are toiling every single day trying to make MLR and their individual clubs a profitable business, right? It's easy to say, hey, let's just have someone who's got some connection to rugby to come out and bail this league. That ain't happening, right? And it does a disservice to the people, like I said, who are toiling every day. And that includes you providing content, trying to build up the team, time to try into market, probably being paid wages that are far below market value, right? So hey. the onus there is then, I'm going to get on my platform, is we need to continue to support the folks that are doing this day in and day out, right? So all the folks who want to pile on to MLR and say, hey, the league's going to fold, go F yourself. I'm serious. Like, that's not a hot take there. You're not, how is that helping by saying, yep, MLR is not going to, it's going to fold. How does that help? And sorry, Johnny, don't edit that out, but go F yourself if you want to praise the, the, the demise of this league. I'm serious. I'm tired of hearing that crap. Yeah, you know, well, you know, the negative people, make themselves heard more than people that are you know okay with stuff right you know that's just that's human nature but we still have a league we have 11 teams and we have some news from around the league don't we we do despite the fact that there are two less teams in mlr there are teams that are still making signings and at least announcing signings right i think the biggest one here that we gotta talk about is the chicago hounds they picked up a Rugby World Cup caliber player in a front row, Ignacio Peculo. He played for Uruguay in the most recent Rugby World Cup, made three appearances. That's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big signing for Chicago as they continue to bring in some, some high-quality players. Well, the Hounds, uh, from all indications, are a sound organization. So, Sound Hounds. You heard it here first. Sound Hounds. Next! <laughs> Uh, moving on, Old Glory DC, they re-signed Brady Daniel. He's a back rower. He's the brother of his teammate, Corey Daniel, who's a USA men's eagle. So, you know, brothers united there in Washington, DC. So, hey, again, 
nice little pickup. Great to have a little brother in the back row with you. Two brothers that have freakish athleticism. They are they are athletes. Good pickup. Good to see uh, another story, a brother story. Next. Hey, how about Nola Gold? They have re-signed prop Jared Adams. He is signed through the 2026 season. So for anyone concerned about it, will MLR last through one more year? Jared's re-upping through two more seasons. Mm. Matt, what do you think of that? I like that. I like that. Commitment, um, some continuity, uh, solid player. And um, I like what, you know, New Orleans, New Orleans does a good job. You know, they, they figure things out. They're, they don't have the deepest pockets on the planet, but they're competitive. And I like what they've done in the offseason. Next. Well, Matt, I, I want to bring up some, some exciting stuff because there's a new, this was, we've already talked about this, but there's a new on-field jersey provider, and that's Kappa. And we got a little bit of a sneak peek of some kit miss, right? The, the new kits that MLR teams will be wearing. And we just got a little sneak peek of the New England Free Jacks kits. I don't know if you saw it, but they look pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it comes to merch, the Free Jacks, for me, are, are killing it. I love their stuff. And it pains me to say that as a New Yorker, saying anything positive of a team from Boston or right next to Boston. But I can do that, and I'm free to do that because my New York Giants beat the New England Patriots in two Super Bowls. Thank you very much. But great stuff. Great stuff. I love it. And I am now for hire, Free Jack. So, uh, yes, I'm a whore. I'm an absolute whore. Next! Well, Matt, that's really about all I got. I apologize for the harsh language earlier in the episode if it makes it. But, um, you know, I don't think it's all doom and gloom for the league. I'm excited for 2024. We may have less teams, but as you said, the quality of the on-field product may have improved. So I'm ex- I'm excited. I mean, it's wild times right now. Everyone should, you know, kind of anticipate that there's going to be a club or two that folds before this team really finds its true stability. And like I said, let's support this damn thing. Darn hey, it. Whoa. Hey, Wow. D-A-M, as in water, right? So that's okay. just so we can leave that in there. All right, John, uh, thank you very much. Somber week, but uh, I think at the end of the day, to just use one cliche, we're going to be okay. And um, onward and upward. But we have waiting in the wings Mr. Nate Augsburger, who got up super early in San Diego. And in case you didn't guess this, Nate was scheduled to be playing with New York. So we'll be right back with Nate Augsburg after this. Digs like a demented mole there. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. You need your cleats? You need them tomorrow? If you order today by 3 p.m. New York time or noon L.A. time, they can have them to you tomorrow. Young, old, male, female, if you're playing on turf, if you're playing on grass, if you're playing in the rain, you're playing in the heat, they've got you covered. RugbyNow.com. Go there now. And we're back with one of my favorite people on the planet and one of my favorite rugby players to watch on the pitch, Mr. Nate Augsburger. Nate Welcome to a uh, a difficult MLR Weekly. Yeah, it's a tough day for a lot of people, man. All right, Real so Nate, day. just a little backstory here for people that don't know. You had signed with Rugby New York, and you were all set to move across the coast. In fact, you're you've got you know you're in the you're in the midst of packing, or now you're in the midst of unpacking. I'm not 100 percent sure, but you know, t- tell me about how this impacted you in the last 24 hours. Yeah, it's been a <clears throat> a bit of a whirlwind, honestly. Um, you know, you just put, there's so much planning and stuff that goes into each getting prepared for a new season each time. And uh, so just being here and kind of having a flow of things and knowing when I'm, knowing when I'm going to leave and when I'm going to move and then finding out that that's not going to be an opportunity that I can take advantage of. And, you know, I think more so for other guys, I mean, some guys got, you know, newborn babies, uh, you know, families, kids that they're bringing over into the mix as well. So it's just, you know, uh, times whatever junk I got by a lot more moving parts. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's the early stages of this thing. And 
I'm probably one of the more graceful people in it because I've just been here and been playing MLR, been growing up in America and playing rugby my, my whole career. So um, I understand that these things happen and I'm fortunate to be in the situation that I am uh, to keep a good outlook on it. But I, my heart goes out to a lot of the people that are in that organization who work their tails off, you know, to create something that they believe in. And then also uh, the other players that are going to be impacted. How did you find out about this, Nate? Uh, just through um, comms with teammates or, you know, some people that are close to the situation that I am out here on the, on the West coast, you know, I just, when we're on a USA tour, there's a lot of messages that get put through to guys, um, whether it's from their teams and stuff like that. So being on the USA tour, um, you know, there wasn't much, uh, too much noise going on. Obviously we were focused enough to go and get the win still. Um, but uh, yeah, just uh, kind of players that uh, stay low to the ground and, and hear how things are going. That's pretty much how I found out about it. And then, everything's pretty much progressed pretty rapidly since I heard um, that there might be some a, sh a shaky few uh, 48 hours to get some things done. So um, and now all of a sudden, uh, you know, it's warranted calls from uh, texts from Matt McCarthy and, and calls from Matt McCarthy early in the West Coast morning. So, yeah, yeah you, you know, it's serious. San Diego. <laughs> you know, it's real. You know, you know, it's real when McCarthy's hitting your lineup. So let's talk about you, the Augsburger family. Your, your wife's from back east, right? Yeah. So, and I would imagine you, you know, there's a job or something, you know, we have now, now everything's up in the air. What, what is next for you and your family? My wife, um, she's had some flexibility in her job, which is, which has been um, awesome when we are going to move out there. So, you know, but now we just kind of peel it all back, go to square one and, and just, uh, you know, do the right things, have the right conversations. And um, that's that's about the best you can do, you know. You know, <laughs> I'm sharing in this pain because I'm out of a gig of revenue stream with the New York team calling their games. And I just came up with a, an idea about hearing about your wife. I think we should do a show, Housewives of the MLR. <laughs> oh, how good. Huh? Yeah. I mean, I think I could convince her to do that. Actually, I think we, I, I think we just came up with you and I will be co-executive producers. You know, I, I handle, I handle all the big business plays around here, uh, McCarthy. So, um, I think I'll just continue to trust my, trust my gut, trust my instincts. But if I need you, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a note. You know, if I, I need I some have, insight, I have Photoshop skills that I can black, I can blackmail owners into getting you a deal. <laughs> We don't need Photoshop over here, man. All right. I'm just saying, if I am a New Yorker, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to go to bat for you because you are a good guy. And uh, and I hate to see this happen to any of you. Uh, it's just, it's gutting. You know, and you don't, it's like, it's like being at a wake. Yeah. I just, I just, uh, everybody's going to have a little bit different thing going on with their situation. So um, to the boys, just, you know, stay strong, do what you need to do. And, um, yeah, I just I just hope uh, the league hops over this thing and and things work out the right way for for everybody, so we can continue to grow this league. All right, brother. I, I again, um, you know, you're a remarkable person. Getting up early, San Diego East Coast time after this just broke, coming on here and handling it the way you handled. You're a pros pro, and you'll make a great addition to any team out there. So get him before somebody else does, folks. All right. Nah, thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, man. All the best. Keep the heads up uh, for all the people out there on the East Coast, man. You know, a lot of people uh, close to this thing. So um, send him my love. Nate all Augsburger right. on MLR Weekly. Thank you, Nate. I wouldn't like to be at the bottom of that. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub. The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained?
We're not back with Brian Ray of America's Rugby News because uh, he is working and we could not line up our schedule as per this breaking story. But in his place is Chris Matina, USA Rugby star, Chris Matina, MLR star, Chris Matina. And what would have been return in his return to New York star, Chris Matina. Chris, welcome. Thanks. Yeah, I wish I was in uh, better circumstances to uh, have this meeting. Absolutely. You know, Chris, people may or may not know that you were coming back to play for New York. Uh, and it was going to it was it was a special thing to have you back. Um, and now we are obviously not at that place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was going to be an exciting it was going to click um and yeah i was supposed to come back but unfortunately um now we are here so um that'll be the second team that i've been on that's folded in the last two seasons so um not anything new for me but definitely uh not great and i know all the boys are feeling it right now um and yeah, I've been here before, so I'm almost a bit more numb to it. But, um, yeah, I really feel for the players, uh, for the staff that have been working tirelessly to get this thing going and trying to make this happen. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, not to be. Yeah, you have that dubious distinction of this happening twice to you now. You were with Austin when that went down, and then you ended up in Chicago where you really put yourself on the map as as a valuable asset to, to a team. Since you've been through this, what would you say to some of your would-be teammates or former teammates? Uh, it's it's not easy. Um, and if you need support or anything from anyone, there's a lot of people out there that want to help out the players. Um, the Players Union is, is a massive one of them, but also just friends, teammates, um, other players. And then, you know, I think the other thing is that we just hope that the MLR – um, is quick to their decision what they're going to do with this. Um, they've been kind of waiting as well for Toronto. So, um, yeah, I think from in my situation, usually, like the time piece is the biggest issue. So it just kind of takes a while. Guys are sitting in limbo. Pretty much everyone right now is mentally suffering because they don't know what they're going to do in a month and they don't know what team they're going to be on. So um, I think time is a massive piece of this. The quicker that something gets done, the better. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, really just kind of reaching out, staying together as a group. If you need anything, there's a lot of people out here that can you can reach out to. That's an important component of this. And Chris, when I say coming back to New York, returning home, I literally mean returning home because you're New York City born and bred and your folks live here. Uh, was You have the ability, if your lodgings fell through, to actually stay with your parents. But other folks don't have that luxury, right? I mean, they have kids perhaps or a spouse or a partner and now it's the upheaval so yeah yeah um i think that's just another piece that is a bit disappointing and i think that needs to change um you know there's really nothing in place right now that says anything about what to do when this happens so the league kind of takes it in stride but if there was something in place say a CBA or a players union or something that can help guide them or have the decisions that are already made. um, We wouldn't be in this position and we wouldn't be sitting here waiting for a verdict um, and for the league to, to figure it out. It would all be set in place already. Well, it's any small consolation. Uh, I've spoken to some owners and their intent is to help the players as much as possible in this scenario. I know it's, you know, that does, again, that doesn't address, what you're saying, a need for some kind of structure and place for this happening. But I think we're learning on the fly here how to deal with this. Going forward now, uh, where do you think you'll end up? you have any preferences? Um, I'm just taking it taking it day by day, to be honest. Um, just finding, find, figuring out all the options, uh, figuring out if I still want to go, still, still want to play. Um, yeah, and just kind of having to see because it's late in the season. Uh, teams are full, salary caps are full. Um, yeah, and you just don't know. It's just another, it's just to get over the hump of having to leave again, um, having to find a new team or go into a new situation after it was kind of hopefully all going to be good here. Um, it's just a bit difficult. So. You wait, uh, you ain't done. There is no <laughs> way in hell after the season that you had. 
And then when I saw you at the New York Sevens tournament, when you Chris. blew me off, uh, I was thinking to, my, to myself, Chris. when you sailed off into the night on your scooter, uh, he looks now like a completely professional athlete. Prior to, you know, I've known you for a long time. Yeah. And now you're in that, you're you're in your prime, bro. There is no way you're not playing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing, I think. I do feel that way, but at the end of the day, life kind of kicks in sometimes. So, um, you know, you've seen it with a lot of players. Look at Seamus Kelly. He did the World Cup. He's in his prime, uh, about to play for New York, and then, you know, life came calling. So probably my fifth season in a row where I'm looking for either a contract or a team in December, a month before, uh, it takes a toll on you. And and at the end of the day, uh, it is – sometimes very hard to overcome i think a bit of transparency which this league has definitely not done well um in its in its existence um would be better for the players and i think you know when you just you just want to know what's going on and none of us knew what was going on some guys didn't know and then obviously we got a text message or a whatsapp last night from the owner kind of confirming that so wow. you know it's it is difficult and you know, I think I just wish that things might have been handled differently, and I hope that in the future they can be. You know, but 2025, let's find an ownership group to come back and, and get it started. Look at L.A. They came back after a year. So, you know, things. Let's, so you, I think, just said, you just said that you'll play in 2025. That's what play, you just said. I'll be the CEO. I'll run the ship. I don't care. I'll, I'll do I'll do whatever. But I, I'm tied to New York. I'll always be tied to New York. And I think we can. I think there's so much potential here if it's if it's done properly. And I think, um, you know, I would love to be involved if if there's a group moving forward and into the next few years. But, um, you know, I think there's. I just love it, and I would love to be a part of it. And I think it will be back. Um, I'm very positive in that. So, um, you can't have you can't have a league without New York in it. So, um, hopefully, someone comes along and wants to to spend a bit of money on it. So. Agreed. Well said, my friend. And again, I am gutted for you and everybody else involved in this mess. Uh, and hopefully we can come out on the other side and and uh, be giggling about this someday. But right now, there's no giggles. It's just uh, trying not to have tears. So I want to thank you for coming on and taking the time. I know it was uh, not easy. Yeah, I appreciate it. And appreciate you shedding some light on it and giving the players a bit more of a voice. Um, it's definitely much more needed in, in this environment. So appreciate that. All right, that's Chris Matina of A Team to be Determined. Uh, TBD. TBD. On that note, I want to thank Mr. Matina. I want to thank Nate Augsberger. And I want to thank John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. And thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including the critically acclaimed The Rugby Odds, The College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Join our weekly newsletter. And please sign up for our American Red Cross blood donor team. 